Rangele budai mandi, ngasun bulet. Apo mana ibu mak? No.
The lengths people will go to keep using Windows is astonishing. But the fact of the matter is, every new version, including Windows 11, has some amazing new features that you don't want to miss out on at the cost of a bunch of new annoyances you'll have to get used to. Or you can get mad and take it into your own hands. And you don't even have to be an elite power user to do it. So let me show you how the average user can decrapify Windows 11 and make it the way it should have been to begin with. War Thunder is an online military vehicle combat game that's free to play and a lot of fun. Try it for free down below today and get some special bonus items for signing up. The taskbar and start menu are arguably the biggest sources of annoyance in Windows 11. And there's no shortage of fixes for that. By far the most comprehensive available so far is Start All Back, which is currently in its release candidate phase. It's so comprehensive that it addresses almost every major issue many will have with Windows 11's new UI, full stop. Not only can it make the start menu less whatever this is, by restoring it to a more Windows 7 like state, but it comes with its own search engine that doesn't rely on the bingified search that Microsoft's been using since Windows 10. The taskbar itself can be modified dramatically with this rather fetching segmented look that makes the centered taskbar make a lot more sense while freeing up desktop real estate otherwise used by a solid bar. I actually kind of like this look, although you can just go for the classic style if that's more your jam. That's not where the Windows 7 and 10 styling stops though, because you can also use it for the corner icons too. By default, Windows 11 bundles the volume control with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the new control center, which can make things a little trickier to do quickly. But with Start All Back, you can separate these icons into their own functions, just like old times. In fact, you can even restore Explorer to the Windows 7 or 10 layout complete with ribbon UI, and it can make the old right-click menus the default instead of the new simplified ones that hide your third-party extensions. 
Oh, and um, even weirdos who like to move the taskbar around can put it anywhere they want, albeit with the caveat that flyouts will still come from the bottom right corner of the screen unless you're using the Windows 7 or 10 styles. There's more that Start All Back can do too, but they're not the only game in town. Meet Start 11 by Stardock. This does a lot of the same stuff as Start All Back, but some of the extended functionality is different, particularly when it comes to integration with the broader object desktop suite. Stardock's Start Menu replacement has a more accurate Windows 10 style, as well as an original modern design that's different from anything Microsoft has done to date. Customization is also a bigger focus overall for Start 11 with custom textures, actions, and uh, direct controls for transparency, blur, and color to dial it in just right. Unfortunately, both Start All Back and Start 11 are paid software. But the good news is that each only costs five bucks, once. As of right now, there aren't any officially supported free options for Windows 11. I mean, you can use OpenShell, which is a free start menu replacement for Windows 10, but it runs behind the regular start menu and only opens if you hit the Windows key, which is less than ideal. So what can you get away with for free? First, you can left align your taskbar. This is something that Microsoft has mercifully added an option for, which you can find in the taskbar settings under the taskbar behaviors. Simple and free. If you want classic right-click menus or to move your taskbar to the top of the screen, both of these can be done with a couple of simple registry tweaks without even having to install anything. I'll link those down below. Now, if you really like the concept of that centered taskbar dock from Start All Back, then good news. Rounded TB is free and will do the same thing. You'll need to use taskbar settings to choose the alignment, but once you dial it in, it looks pretty snazzy if you ask me. Unlike Start All Back though, the menu itself is still in the middle with this method. It's got baked in support for another app called Translucent TB that allows you to customize the visual style of the bar, but there are performance ramifications for doing this, so it's not recommended by the developers right now. Taskbar X can do some of the same stuff and does a bit more with behavior rather than appearance if you want a more tweaky tool for the taskbar. But um, as cool as all this is, there's still something missing from Windows 11. Live tiles. If you grew to love them since their introduction in Windows 8, then good news. Microsoft removed them in Windows 11. Wait, <laughs> that, that's not good news at all. <laughs> no, no, the good news is an intrepid developer decided to create a free program to put live tiles wherever the heck you want on both Windows 10 and 11. Put them in the start menu, put them on the desktop as widgets. It doesn't matter. Your app doesn't even have to have a live tile. It can grab notifications and use those to make it live. It's pretty sweet, or at least it's a start. What if you also happen to hate the new routed windows? Well, that's a little trickier. Win 11 Disable or Restore Rounded Corners is a creatively named app that does exactly what it says on the tin by modifying the Desktop Window Manager DLL to remove the rounded corner bits entirely. That's a potential security risk since it requires the permissions of the file to be modified, plus you'll need to reapply the patch if the file ever gets an update from Microsoft. But if you do break something, there's always System Restore. And the upside is you need only run the app and reboot to once again gaze upon the glory of 90 degree corners, just like God intended. Speaking of intentions, I'm not sure you can give Microsoft much benefit of the doubt on making it way more difficult to change your default browser than it was on Windows 10. Thankfully, Mozilla reverse engineered Edge's one-click switch method for Firefox. Uh, for those of you with a more Google-centric browser, you'll still have to painstakingly make the changes yourself, but you'll notice that even if you get a different web browser set as the default, no matter what method you use, Microsoft Edge will still launch from time to time when clicking on links or accessing Windows Help. Enter Edge Deflector, a simple little app that registers itself to handle a special hidden Microsoft Edge link type passing it on to your default browser. After the first time setting it as a default, you'll never see Edge again, hopefully. And now for the bonus round, all the stuff that I think is useful that's not Windows 11 specific, starting with alt drag. If you've used Linux, you'll know that this title refers to the ability to hold a keyboard key down and then click anywhere in a window to drag it around. Something that can help with productivity and is particularly useful for touch screens. It's a little old now and doesn't directly support Eero Snap but it's got its own snap feature built in that kind of mimics it. Another app called Sizer can help with that though. It allows you to position and size windows quickly and accurately. It's a fair bit faster than dragging the window around manually, even to use with Snap. Twinkle Tray is an app that people with notebooks and Surface devices might appreciate. It lets you change the brightness of even external displays. And while it doesn't smoothly step through the brightness levels like modern laptops, 
What's really cool is you can set minimum and maximum values for each monitor to normalize them, so you can control all the displays at once whenever you change the brightness. Combine this with scheduled brightness changes and another app called Auto Dark Mode, and you've got a pretty great setup IMO, complete with time-based desktop wallpaper switching. Twinkle Tray hooks into the on-screen display control via DDCCI, which is supported by most displays since the late 2000s and is a whole rabbit hole all on its own. Finally, I would be remiss to talk about decrapifying Windows if I didn't talk about Power Toys. These are small apps developed by Microsoft for the purpose of extending Windows for power users, and some, like virtual desktops, have even graduated to flagship features today. Some of them, like SVG previews, seem like they should probably be baked into Windows without any further questions asked. But then there's others like Fancy Zones. That's an app that lets you partition your displays and set up custom layouts for apps. It's something that I would actually say is super useful for ultra-wide users and almost non-negotiable for super ultra-wide users or users of big TV displays like Linus. Microsoft even made a Spotlight-esque search tool proving that, yes, they can do it properly. They just hide it away as a power toy. <sighs> Get subscribed, by the way, because yes, we are going to be reviewing Windows 11 in its current state, and based on what you've seen today, we've definitely got some things to say. There's a ton of other stuff around, like alternative file managers like One Commander, file copiers like TerraCopy, process managers like Pryo or Process Lasso that save priorities and CPU affinities, and many, many more tweaks. But for now, let's turn it over to you. Are there any tweaks or utilities that you use that we didn't cover? Let us know in the comments down below, and hey, maybe we can make a regular thing out of this kind of video. Just like we make regular things out of sponsors to segues like... The sp the p p p p p War Thunder is a free-to-play online military vehicle combat game that's available on Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series S and X with crossplay. There are more than 50 million players from all over the world, and it features an incredible arsenal of more than 2,000 historically accurate, playable tanks, aircraft, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. You can participate in massive combined arms battles on over 80 major battlefields from World War II to the end of the Cold War, and there's always active development with free major updates every couple of months that add even more content. That includes vehicles, maps, and new gameplay features. So head to the link below and start playing War Thunder for free. You'll also be able to get a free bonus premium vehicle just for signing up. Thanks for watching, guys. This is kind of a different video, so maybe go check out our video on Windows 10 Ameliorated for another take on how to fix Windows. That project no longer exists, so um, think of it as a fun little time capsule. Ready? Mm-hmm. Need to show up, my love. I'm one of the short ones here. Mm -hmm. After you. I was quite afraid of it, but it was not bad. Oh, not bad, huh? Eh? Ah, uh, well. It was windy. Yeah, well. Oh, cool. I can imagine all these small planes, they're like bumpy. Yeah. It's windy and like all these clouds now. You believe it? Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to let you know that you're coming. 
We're a bit delayed, like an hour or so. Oh, really? Yeah. And where? And Johannesburg? Johannesburg, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, we had technical problems. Oh, okay, okay. Then it's then always you, great you to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were just in Giza first. Oh, okay. We've been busy. Pioneer camp coming. Someone safari did Yes, oh, yes, yes. Cool. We did and we did okay. Oh, nice. That's nice. Way to make some money for us to come and see yeah, you. I can <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive place. Yeah. yeah. You have to make some money first. Yeah. But like, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, and save money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was not you, not you. Not you. Like, oh. Because of COVID, you know, the, yeah, the COVID, we yeah. couldn't do any many travel anyway, so we put it all in this one. Yeah, right, honey? Nice. yeah we were gonna go to Mar Mauritius, but then. Oh, like after us? No. no. <laughs> it's dead. Oh, okay, yes. And then we thought we got it smaller. Yes, Oh. Yeah, with COVID, uh, like things change and things, like now it's difficult to travel yeah. from one country to another. Very much so, yeah. That's very nice. I'm glad you made it. I miss those roads, don't you? <laughs> These roads, <laughs> just driving. <laughs> that was the last time we were in 2019. 2015, yeah. 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 No, no, we did the last one, was it in 19? 18 or 19, we did it, I think Pilansburg or oh, Midduck Bay. Pilansburg, yes, yes. Okay, cool. I did up in Bangor about four years ago. Oh, four years ago, yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, I've never been that side of the north. I just said it's like beautiful. That's uh, beautiful, yeah. yeah. So I got top of my bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got like now we're going to meet Shannon. Yeah. He's the camp manager. And probably maybe the late might be Melvin. Melvin will be our guide okay. and the elephant today and I'll be the trigger. Oh, okay. so oh great. So with something so you can make it. So that's the elephant yeah. over there. Oh nice. You can see him there. Yeah. yeah. You can see it's been like in the water. It's just nice yeah. and Dark, wet. Yeah. Oh, the plane is taken off. Like when we get out there in our yeah. When are we doing the first thing at four, is it? Yeah. Yeah, four o'clock. Yeah. Yes. When four o'clock will meet, then we'll go out from there. So, but Shannon, she will take you through, she will tell you. Yeah. Like, or the morning time, afternoon time, and everything. have no bathroom, it's, right? Sorry? These little planes that you cannot go to oh, the bathroom. Oh, no, no, yes, yes. Yeah. There's no so bathroom like all, yeah. Yeah. You know, We're all like ready to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it looks like it's gonna be just two of you guys, so... Oh, okay. like it's, it's flexible, it's up to you. Like, if you wanna do it late or early and all, it's just up to you. 
Yeah, definitely like Good this afternoon and tomorrow morning and see yeah. the people. Yeah. Nice, yeah. See one lying there. Yeah. Just enjoying this sun. Basking there. It's yeah. cooking. It feels like it's cooking for us, but my fun for him is just like nice. He's enjoying it. Lying on the side, like, like lying as one of the dogs. Yeah, like I'll, I'll, I'll stop more before I try. Yep, that's the bird. Oh, let's see, they're just lying there. Oh, cute. Oh. It's huge. <laughs> okay, it's stretching his ear. Yeah. That's nice. Oh. Okay, I really got to see the bathroom, my friend. Yeah, let's Sorry. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll continue at four. <laughs> yeah, we're just like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you now not to keep you for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> there is no bathroom on this small plane. Hi everybody, this is Austin with Austin's Nerdy Things, and today we will be installing macOS 12 Monterey on Proxmox 7 uh, as a virtual machine. So this guide, this video, will be built on Nick Sherlock's blog post. Um, he has a number of these for the various Proxmox and macOS versions. I've had great success with these in the past, so this is what we'll be following along with today. Uh, so we will be using uh, an adaptation uh, for Proxmox from the OSX KVM project. Um, thank you to Keola and Leozen. Um, so these guys, along with Nick, have kind of paved the way for this. Um, Alright, so requirements. You need to have Proxmox 7 installed. You also need a real Mac to get the OSK key, which is kind of like a license key to enable the Mac to boot on non-Mac hardware. Um, the Proxmox host CPU must support SSE 4.2, uh, which came with Nehalem, uh, which is came out 13 years ago. So if your computer is newer than 13 years old, new, then it will work fine. Um, all right, so I have not said this yet, but we will be running this guide on a Windows PC. Um, using WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, to run these scripts. Um, so first of all, we're going to download Nick's copy of the OSX KVM repository. Uh, so let me just switch over to... Actually, so this is a PowerShell script, uh, so I'm just going to do WSL for Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and it just drops me in my user folder on the C drive, so we're going to change... You can do this wherever. Um, I'm going to change the H drive, which is where I do scratch things like this so we need to clone this git repository we'll do git clone uh, and then paste this in paste it only once my mouse has been acting up uh, all right so git cloning uh, this is just downloading the files from that repository essentially so nick has two sets of instructions um, essentially one for mac os one for linux uh, we will be running this under the linux subsystem the Windows subsystem for Linux, so we're going to follow the Linux instructions. Uh, so once this gets done downloading, uh, we will be installing these two packages, QEMU utils. QEMU is the virtualization technology that Proxmox uses, and Make is a system to build um, various things and packages and those those types of things. So once this is done, okay, that took a lot longer than last time I did this. And uh, I should back up. I'm making this video again because I did already install uh, this Monterey virtual machine with the recommended disk size of 64 gigabytes. Uh, however, that was not enough free space to install Xcode. So I'm doing it again and I'm going to give it a much larger hard drive. Um, all right, so we just want to copy this and paste it once. Um, I already did this, so nothing will be installed, uh, but this is to get your QEMU utils and make installed. Uh, we're going to skip this 
Actually, no, we're not. Um, what we're going to do is go to our new folder. Um, when you clone something, it creates the folder. So we're going to change directory to OSX KVM. Uh, and then we're going to further change directory to scripts slash Monterey, um, as indicated here. And now we are going to make the Monterey recovery image. And so this uh, also downloads quite a bit. Um, let's see, this will be 608 megabytes. So we'll check back in in a couple seconds. Okay, so that is done as well. Uh, what that just did is it downloaded the Monterey recovery installer from Apple uh, and built the .img file. Uh, this .img is what Proxmox will understand. Proxmox does not understand the .dmg, uh, which is what um, Apple stuff speaks. So we will be uploading this to Proxmox ISO store. Um, and the easy way to do that is just click on local um, and then ISO images and then upload. We just made uh, this recovery image um, and it lives in script slash Monterey. So we're gonna double click that and upload it. We're gonna skip this because we just did that. This is for the Mac OS portion. Um, next up is to download the open core image. Um, open core is a bootloader, I believe is the best term for it. Um, it's basically how to get your system ready to boot the Mac OS. Um, so I already have this downloaded. All right, this is showing that we're successfully, we've successfully uploaded the Monterey recovery image. And <clears throat> here is the open core. Um, I downloaded the .iso.gz, um, which just had it zipped up. So now I'm going to extract this to the H drive where we are working. <clears throat> All right, so open core to H drive, and then we are going to upload that as well. So that's going to be in this folder, open core, upload. All right, so now we have the two images we need in our Proxmox ISO images, the Monterey recovery image that we built in the open core V16 that we downloaded. Um, that comes from this link. Um, you know, basically just come here, download the ISO.gz, unzip it and stick it somewhere and then upload it to Proxmox. Um, all right, so next is to get the OSK authentication key. Um, this, like I said, is basically the key that Mac uses to determine if it is running on real hardware or not. Uh, so run this script on your Mac and it will spit out a 64 character OSK for you, um, which we will be using when we edit the configuration file for this virtual machine. Okay, so to create the virtual machine itself, uh, we're going to go to create virtual machine. We're gonna name it something original like Mac OS. Monterey, um, next. And we are going to use the open core image as the main boot. Uh, we're gonna set the OS to other. Uh, the system type is going to be VMware compatible. Uh, SCSI controller is good. The machine type is Q35. The firmware is UEFI. Uh, the UEFI storage, we're going to do ZFS because that's where we're going to stick it. you got to uncheck this, uh, pre-enroll keys. We are not going to pre-enroll keys. Um, and the rest should match up. So for disks then, we will be adding a, another disk. This is going to be the main hard drive for the Mac OS virtual machine. Uh, and I'm going to stick that on my ZFS also. And I'm going to make this like 120 gigabytes. If that's not big enough, then... It said there were 44 gigabytes free. Um, the Xcode download is like 11 or 12, so I don't know what Apple's doing with their file systems, but the fact that there's 44 gigabytes free and it can't install an 11 gigabyte program is um, just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna do write back cache uh, because I know my underlying storage is fine. Um, if you don't have ZFS or otherwise, um, just leave it at the default of no cache. Uh, and then discard as well. Um, so I think we're good here. All right, so for cores, um, the number of cores per socket has to be a power of two. Uh, so a power of two is one core, two core, four, eight, 16, 32. 
um, so on and so forth. So if you want something like uh, six cores in your virtual machine, you have to do three sockets of two cores. Um, that's how you get six. That's how you get you know other numbers that are not powers of four that generally work in other systems. Uh, we're just going to leave this. Um, we're going to do four cores of one socket. Keep it basic. Memory. Um, Nick shows we're doing this with four gigabytes of memory. Um, my VM host has quite a bit more available, so I'm going to do 16 gigs. Uh, and then for network, you just got to change this to vert IO. Um, and then we should be good. So it looks a little bit different. I don't know exactly what changed. Um, Cause I'm running Proxmox 7 and so is he, but the, it's a little out of order. Got some different options here. <clears throat> All right, so gonna click finish. We are not going to start it. All right, in the options page for the VM, we have VM 100 is Mac OS Monterey. So in the options page, uh, use tablet for pointer set to yes. Um, and now in the hardware page, we're going to add a second DVD drive at IDE zero and set it to use the Monterey installer image. So we don't have the full, we only have recovery. We're going to use that. Um, all right, so we don't, start the VM yet. So now we need to SSH into the Proxmox server and we need to change um, the configuration file a little bit. You really don't have to. Um, I don't know how many people know about this, but if you just click the host in the data center dropdown, you can click shell and you're dropped right into uh, a root shell on your Proxmox machine. So you can skip the SSH step. Um, all right, so now we've got this line that we need to add. So let me fire up a notepad. All right, so here's a notepad. Uh, so we're gonna add this line and we're gonna add some other arguments to it. All right, so we're paste this. Um, this is a single line. It looks like it's multiple, but it is actually a single line. And note here, this is this is the OSK stuff. Uh, so this is where you would put, this is where you put the 64 character OSK from your Mac. Um, and I'm not going to be typing it out here. I will not show it in this video. Um, you need to get it from your Mac and place it in here. Um, okay, so we've got the first half of this argument done, uh, and then we need to add more to it. Um, if your CPU, host CPU is Intel, add this to the end. Uh, if your host CPU is AMD, add this stuff to the end. So we've got an Intel Xenon, what is it? Uh, E5-2678 V3 in this one. Uh, so basically this is, you know, when we selected the CPU type to be Penryn, we did not do that yet. Uh, I skipped over that. Um, all right, VM 100 hardware processor type needs to be Penryn. Okay. Um, so we're, gonna, we're, we're telling the Mac VM that we have a Penryn CPU um, that's officially what it, it's going to be running on. However, with all this other stuff, we are going to expose here specifically, CPU-host, um, plus all this other stuff is, we're gonna expose all of the other features that the CPU has to the Mac VM, um, even though the Mac VM is going to think it's a Penryn CPU, which is like super old, it's like 12 years old at this point. Um, so this will pass through all the features that your CPU supports. Open Core's config will pretend to Mac OS that the CPU's model name is Penryn for compatibility. Um, okay, so now we're going to copy this single line and then we're going to nano slash etc pve slash whatever else it's set up here. I think it's QEMU server slash 100 is our virtual machine ID. Uh, we're just going to page down a couple times to get to the bottom, right click to paste. And so here we have our args line. Uh, it's really long, but this is all the stuff to basically fake the underlying hardware. You will need to change this, the OSK, to what your Mac has spit out. Um, I will be pausing um, later to do that uh, because we still have to edit 
two other things. Okay, so now find the lines that define the two ISOs. Um, and so these would be these two, um, IDE0 and IDE2. Uh, and so we're going to be changing this media equals CD-ROM to say cache equals unsafe, uh, which is effectively telling it um, that these are actually hard drives instead of CD-ROMs or DVDs or whatever. Uh, so this enables writes to these IDE devices. So your final VM configuration file should resemble this. Uh, and it does. We've got Monterey recovery on IDE 0. We've got open core on IDE 2. We've got caches unsafe for both. Um, we've got our Penryn CPU here. Uh, four cores. The rest looks good. So I'm going to hit Control O, Enter to save. Control X to exit. Um, and now we have to uh, enable this. Um, so basically we're going to set um, KVM ignore MSRS. I don't know what this does. Um, I did at one point to the KVM kernel module. Um, and then we're going to update our bootloaders to persist across reboots. All right, so this is going to run. Uh, it takes a couple minutes. I am going to also change out the OSK in the config file, and then we will get to installing Monterey. Okay, so we have updated the uh, bootloaders and the kernels. Um, these will always use this option now. Uh, and I have also changed the OSK, uh, the license in the .conf file. So we should be good to go to install Monterey. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to right click on our Mac VM, go to start, switch over to console. All right, and so we did build a recovery installer. So the icon will be a hard disk and will be labeled Mac OS base system. Um, all right, so kind of annoying but uh, it resizes by default um, so I'm just going to live with it like this so here is the open core boot menu um, you can use the arrow keys left and right to go left and right but we want to do Mac OS based system you cannot use your mouse on that screen okay so next up we will uh, fire up disk utility and erase the vert IO block media disk and name it main Okay, so we've got the initial boot going. Uh, we're going to go to disk utility, continue. All right, and here's our vert IO block media. Uh, shows it at 128 gigabytes. Uh, even though I said 120, that's the difference between gigabytes and gigi, gigi beats, something like that. I forget, GIB versus GB. All right, we're going to name it main. Uh, we're going to erase it. All right, it's done, click done. We're gonna exit disk utility by going up here, disk utility, and then quit disk utility. Uh, and now, um, it says reinstall, but really we're doing the initial install of Mac OS Monterey. Continue. Continue. Oh, little baby's waking up from her afternoon nap. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get this uh, going. Um, it downloads the install media, the full OS from Apple, which takes a while. Uh, so it's throttled on the Apple side. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast your internet is. Um, it takes a while for this to go. So let's get this going and, uh, and see how long it actually takes to install. All right, we've got some license stuff here. We're gonna install to main. All right, so two hours, 17 minutes remaining, that's the default value. Um, this will drop down to like 50 minutes the first time it updates, and it'll take 20 or 30 minutes um, to actually download the install media. So we will be checking back in in 20 or 30 minutes. Um, I'm not gonna say the hard part's over yet, but the hard part's basically over. Um, you know, we got the virtual machine created and configured. Now we're installing the Mac operating system and uh, from here should be pretty smooth sailing just have to wait and reboot a couple different times so if you like this so far go ahead and click like and subscribe um, to see more videos like this and we will check back in with you guys uh, hopefully sooner than an hour and eight minutes um, but don't be scared if my clock jumps a couple hours ahead I'm dealing with the 
or hanging out with the baby, not dealing with the baby. I get to hang out with her. I don't have to hang out with her. So, okay, we'll catch you guys when we catch you guys. Okay, we are back after a clock jump and a nice visit to the park on a 50 degree sunny day. Um, so what has happened is the first stage of installation has completed and the VM will need to reboot two or three more times in quick succession and each time we must manually pick the Mac OS installer entry. So clicking over here to our virtual machine, again, the mouse does not work. You can see this is the Mac one here, but the arrow keys on your keyboard do. So we're gonna go to Mac OS installer, hit enter, and uh, let, it's, let it do its thing again. Um, basically, anytime that pops up, um, you just need to hit it. So I think I had three reboots the first time I installed this. Uh, this is the second one now. Uh, I'm not sure why it says two or three times in quick succession. Uh, 29 minutes is not quick. Um, if I recall correctly, I think it took like 10 or 15 minutes the first time I did this. So we will be back after another clock jump. All right, another time jump and another reboot. Let's see. Here's my mouse, Mac OS installer. Uh, this should be the last time, I believe. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm gonna stop recording again and we'll be back after the next time jump. Okay, so that was what appears to be the last time jump. Um, I think we're done installing. So we do have a main over here on the right. Um, so let me auto scale this and uh, let's see, what is it? Local scaling, turn auto resize off. Yep, there we go. Okay, so Let's boot up to main and see what happens. If uh, your boot freezes about right here in the progress bar, it's because your OSK is wrong. Ask me how I know. So we skipped over that, got the right OSK in there, the license key. Um, it's proceeding as expected for a normal Mac OS boot. Uh, the first boot does take a lot longer than any subsequent boots. Um, in Nick's blog post, he talks about how um, it's performing housekeeping tasks. So, all right, looks like it rebooted itself one more time. Let's try main again, see what happens. <clears throat> All right, and we have a working Mac OS Monterey install. Um, so that is the majority of the content. Um, this gets us to the install, um, through the install, sorry. There are a couple more housekeeping tasks, to borrow Nick's phrase, uh, to make the open core install permanent, because um, right now we do need open core to boot uh, every time. Uh, you hit the arrow over and go to main and that gets you through the boot. Even if you hit reboot, you need to do that. Um, so just a heads up, um, I'm not gonna walk through these. I just wanted to get through the initial install. Um, well, let me back up. If there is any demand, uh, if there's enough demand, I will go ahead and make a video for that. Um, sleep management, this sleep worked fine for me. Um, I did not have any issues with waking Monterey up from sleep. Um, Doing the config.plist stuff, I am really kind of in the deep end for that. Uh, I have not messed around with it too much, so I'm going to not go through any of this. Um, same with automatic boots, verbose boot, if you need this, you do uh, command plus V, uh, command I think is control for Windows. Um, here's how to change the screen resolution. Uh, Nick talks about getting um, a video card installed. And so that does work, but the Mac OS screen sharing is how I primarily use it. Uh, so you go to settings and then sharing, and then you check screen sharing. Uh, and then I use VNC viewer um, and it works pretty well for performance. Um, the other thing that Nick does is he basically uh, runs the virtual machine as his daily driver, uh, you know, his main computer. So he passes through a bunch of stuff. Um, Here's that odd core counts thing. Like if you if you want to have six cores, you have to have 
three sockets of two cores each, uh, which does it right here. Um, fixing guest boots to you, EFI shell. We did not have this problem. All right, and I do need to stop here and warn you to do not try to use iMessage with this as installed. Uh, you will need to go through and set a number of services. Uh, you need to basically generate a couple different um, serial number type things. Uh, MLB, ROM, serial product names, serial number, uh, or sorry, system product names, system serial number, system UUID. Um, you have to go through you know, all these steps. I'll put this link in the description, um, but this is basically what you want to do if you need to connect it to you know, things like uh, iCloud, iMessage, FaceTime, uh, those kinds of things. Um, it's a pretty generic base install, and because it's not an actual not an actual Apple machine, you will have problems. Um, also, I want to warn you about upgrading. Um, since we're in Proxmox, it's a virtual machine. You have the ability to take snapshots and backups. Do that anytime you want to upgrade beforehand. Um, and here's some instructions for how to upgrade from Big Sur. Uh, and then you will see the scroll bar is you know only about a third of the way down. The rest are comments. Um, if you have anything going on, you of course can comment on my video or you can comment on Nick's blog post that I will of course be linking to in the description as well. So, all right. Well, I think this video altogether was about 30 minutes for installing Mac OS 12 Monterey on Proxmox 7. I might try to turn this into a script. Um, I think that would be very helpful and save a lot of time um, so keep your eyes open for that um, but anyways we are now done here I am going to finish setting up the initial stuff and then I'm going to download Xcode and hopefully it installs on 120 gigabyte disk if it doesn't I'm going to be very unhappy so that's that uh, go ahead and click like and subscribe if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like it um, and uh, we'll catch you next time all right, signing off for today, Austin with Austin's Nerdy Things. Have a good one.
all this position here, Phil. Huh? See, they're not digested. Mm. Yeah, so just go straight through. Straight through. So what they did, put in the mouth and and chew that, bite it, took the juice out of it, right, and, and that's then the it. whole thing comes. Yeah, comes in and out. So by doing that, uh, then that seed can germinate. Then mm. they help just to plant more trees, mm. which is the good thing. Not very efficient. Fresh yeah. it is. Sorry? You can tell how fresh it yeah. is by testing it. Uh, you to <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you put the finger there, you put it in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Then you test it. But when you like when you're on a survival course yeah. or someone just dropped you out and you're in a bush and you just try it out there, you're in the middle of the jungle and you there's no water. Then you can use elephant down. So you get elephant down like that, squeeze it, take the water out of it. Mm. And it's not it's not poison, it's not gonna kill you nothing. It's not gonna taste well. It's not gonna taste well. It's not gonna actually hurt your taste.
quite afraid of it, but it was not bad. Oh, not bad, huh? Eh? Ah, uh, well. It was windy. Yeah, well. Oh, cool. I can imagine all these small planes, they're like puppy. Yeah. It's windy and like all these clouds now. You believe it? Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Yeah. <laughs> We're a bit delayed, like an hour or so. Oh, really? Yeah. And where? And Johannesburg? Johannesburg, yeah. Oh, wow, really? The plane had technical problems. Oh, okay, okay. Then it's always great here. Yeah. And then we went to St. Giza first. Oh, okay. We've been busy. Pioneer camp coming. It's beautiful here, huh? Yeah, it's yeah. nice and beautiful. Nice and lush. We had like a lot of rain. Like a lot of rain. It's very nice for the animals. Yeah. It's very cool. And when last you were here? When was that? I was that? here in 2013 and oh, 2015. Long time ago. Oh, oh 13 and 15. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's my first time. Oh, no, it's not bad. Oh, this is your yeah, first time. Mine's oh, first, cool. yeah. that's nice. It's first time to crew though. Oh, really? Yeah. So but you've been someone safari group? Yes, oh, yes, cool. yes. We had Matikwe and we did oh, cool. yeah. oh, nice. That's nice. We had to make some money for us to come and see yeah, you. I can <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive place. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make some money for us. Yeah. But like, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, and save money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it was not you, not you. Like <laughs> because of COVID, you know. The, yeah, the COVID. We yeah. couldn't do any, many travel anyway, so we put it all in this one. Yeah, right, that's honey? Nice. yeah we were going to go to Mar Mauritius with it. Oh, like after us? No. Oh. <laughs> it's dead. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> and then we thought we'd have it to Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, with COVID, uh, like things can change and things, like now it's difficult to yeah. travel from one country to another. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. That's very nice. I'm glad you made it. I miss those roads, don't you? <laughs> These roads, <laughs> just driving. <laughs> that was the last time we were in 2019. 2015. Yeah. 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 No, no, we did the last one, was it in 19? Uh, yeah. 18 or 19, we did it, I think, Pilansburg or oh, Midway. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, and I did Akubango about four years ago. Oh, four years ago, yes. Oh, all right. I mean, I've never been that side of the north, I just said it's like beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful, yeah. So I got top of my bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got yes. like now we're gonna meet Shannon. Yeah. He's the camp manager. And probably maybe the late we might meet Melvin. Melvin will be our guide. Okay. And the elephant today. And I'll be the trekker. Oh, so oh was great. Busy with something. So he didn't make it. So that's the elephant yeah. over there. Oh, nice. You can see him there. Yeah. Uh, you can see it's been like in the water. It's just nice yeah. and Dark, wet. Yeah. Oh, the you plane is taking off. Yeah, like when we get out there again. Yeah. Before. So when are we doing the first thing at 4, you said? Yeah. Yeah, 4 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. So, but Shannon should take you through, she will tell you yeah. like all the morning time, afternoon time, everything. Have no bathroom, it's, right? 
sorry? These little planes that you cannot go to oh, the bathroom. Oh, no, no, yes, yes. Yeah. There's no so bathrooms like all, out there yeah. to watch you. Man. We're all like ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it looks like it's, it's going to be just two of you guys or so. Uh, okay. Like, it's, it's flexible. It's up to you. Like, if you want to do it late or early and all okay. this stuff, it's just up to you. Yeah, definitely like Good this afternoon and yeah. tomorrow morning and see yeah. the people. Yeah. Nice, yeah. See one lying there. Yeah. Just enjoying this sun. Basking. Basking there. It's yeah. cooking. It feels like it's cooking for us, but not fun for him. It's just like nice. He's enjoying it. Lying on the side, like, like flying after one of the dogs. Yeah, it's like I'll, I'll, I'll stop more before I Yep, there's the bird. Oh, see, they're just laying there. Oh, cute. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> okay, it's twitching his ear. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, I really got to see the bathroom, my friend. Yeah, let's Sorry. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll continue at four. <laughs> yeah, we're just like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you now not to keep you for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is no bathroom on this small plane. Baby on the ground.
Yes. already surrendered and they were um, they were crowned the uh, the kings of the north and I was 
to that. And these guys, they wanted to kill the children that were fathered yeah, by the other that. males. And the females were trying to protect them. And I these remember. boys started killing the females. They are known of killing the girls. Because the girls were standing on their own. And then they, that's when they took over. And they started enlarging their territory further south. One of their brother, yeah. So they lost the first brother, got killed by a buffalo. Oh. And they were fighting with the buffalo. Five males taking down one buffalo. The buffalo is a bear. And they're going to die without putting a serious fight. Yeah. And the male fought. And one of their brother, he was in he was in good condition. He was not well. So he was punctured. And the horn of the buffalo went straight into his lung. Oh and then eventually he him. died from that wound. And the last meal was the buffalo that he oh, had wow. killed. And then they were down to four. These boys started enlarging their territory further south, this side. This so they were like yeah, most of the predators, especially uh, leopards, they will hunt by smell. Okay. Because by touch, they are very short, very small, just so hard they can't see. Huh. So, Elephant. It's a rhino. Oh, rhino. Yeah, I see it has three digits. It's like a wow. rhino. Big one. Mm, big bull. So elephant will be just one big round cycle. Right. Yeah. But you don't see the the digits. The digits. Yeah.
He's pissed off. It's way back there. I got everything. Oh, you got everything? Yes. Okay. <laughs> You'll be famous. <laughs> Very famous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got you. You got you, Rena Bui.
so it will come down here. Mm -hmm. I thought you forgot about it. <laughs> Bring like a food bag or what? No. Sometimes do this like before they get active, we just sort of like yeah. chatting to each other because yeah. they've been sleeping for long. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah you don't get from the other in South Africa unless you do train flight from Brazil or Right. Yeah. Not really. No, it's the name of the 70s, 1970s, 80s. You know, there's a guy in the US called Fabulous Fabian, okay. the singer. It's not even a Christian name, so yeah. it's rather. Scratching. Mm. You have to be very bold to do that. I and mean, then to walk through the thick, thick grass like this.
Yesterday, here. Also different. <laughs> 